In this video, I'm going to break down the 10 best ways to source items to sell on eBay. I've been a full-time reseller now for the last year and I've found that every single one of these sourcing methods has been able to return some really highly profitable items to sell on eBay. So hopefully you get something out of it today. I will say though, stick around for the 10th method in this video because I really do think it's the secret for never running out of inventory again. I'll be giving you some pro tips as well along the way and I'll also be talking about the different items that I like to pick up in each of these different methods. So it's a jam-packed episode guys. There's a lot of info on this one. Let's get into it. Let me know in the comments below though, before we get started, what are your eBay goals right now? Are you trying to list 100 items a week? Are you trying to make 100 sales a week? It'd be great to get your thoughts. I always love to hear it, so do drop that in the comments below. The first sourcing method that I've got for you is one that we often forget. It's one that I'll tell the beginner resellers out there to focus on, and that is to simply look around your own home for inventory. Uh, look, I personally start with the phone and the laptop. I upgraded those a year or two ago, and I had them lying around the house. I was able to make myself a good two to $300 so that's a perfect place to start. I think shoes, clothes, video games, toys, we've all got these items lying around the house and they all do go on to sell for some great money on eBay. The pro tip that I've got for you with this one is just to make sure that you're doing your eBay comp sold search. So basically seeing what the item is actually selling for on eBay before you put all that time and effort into listing the item up, taking all those photos. So just do that quick check while you're running around the house searching for items and that will go a long way to make sure that you're gonna make some money. The next sourcing method is a personal favorite of mine and that is using Facebook Marketplace. Now it's been around for about five years. I really do think it will be used a whole lot more by people in the years to come. So it's gonna provide a hell of a lot more opportunity for you guys out there to be sourcing great items on. So a couple of advantages with Facebook Marketplace is that you can speak directly with your buyer and negotiate a lower price. You can also generally go and pick up the item locally or you can even search nationally for a certain item that you might be interested in sourcing. The other one as well is that you can get strategic in sourcing the items that you want to sell. When you go into a thrift store, it's always dependent upon what is in that store. But on Marketplace, you can get very strategic and source the items that you actually want. So I think there are some huge advantages to using Facebook Marketplace. I personally like to look for DVD bundles. I buy them for 50 cents and I go on to sell them for $10 plus individually on eBay. And the other one as well is video games and video game con uh, consoles. I'll do a lot of those as well. Some great money in that space. The one really quick pro tip that I've got for you is that Facebook Marketplace, there is a heavy competition for good deals out there. And there's a lot of people trying to pick up these good deals. So speed wins. If you secure a deal, you know it's a good one, go and grab it right away and you won't be disappointed. Now, if you work a nine to five and eBay is a bit of a side hustle for you, you can only source items on a Saturday or a Sunday, the flea market or the car boot sale might be a great sourcing method for you. This is a way that you can get really low cost items, often less than what you'd find in a thrift store. So I've, I've done this a few times, not a whole heap because I don't typically source on the weekends, but when I have done it, I've been able to find some really cool items. It's often collectibles, really kind of knickknack type items that people have had lying around the house that they bring out to these car boot sales and they on sale for a very, very cheap price. So the one little tactic that I've got for you, the bit of a pro tip here when it comes to the flea markets is I like to do one round of the markets and then go back for the items that I'm interested in. The buyer always thinks that they've lost me the first time I go and then the second time I come back, I'm always up for a pretty good deal. So I've done that a number of times. It's worked well for me in the past. Give that one a try and hopefully you can negotiate down to a lower price yourself. Now this next sourcing method I think is often neglected by resellers out there and that is the tip shop. The recycling centers and what will often happen is people will dispose of their goods that they no longer want and they'll often be reselling goods in there that actually go on to sell for some great money on eBay. There's a tip shop often associated to that recycling center. You can go in, you can buy items for a very low price. I've often found sporting goods. I've often found electronics that I've been able to resell out of these stores. So I think because resellers aren't necessarily sourcing from these locations regularly, I think it's a good place for you guys to go and check out, especially if you've never done it before. You'd be amazed at what is actually in these stores available to purchase that are still in great condition. The pro tip that I've got for you with the tip shop would be just to go early. Make sure that you're going in the mornings, getting the items that were in from the day before, and you're always a better chance of grabbing a pretty good bargain. The fifth sourcing method is by far my personal favorite, and that is the thrift stores, the local op shops within your area. I am incredibly fortunate where I am here on the Gold Coast that I've got 18 local op shops within my area, these charitable donation centers that offer amazing products 
at a pretty fair price. I will say they are going up slightly of late, but I'm always looking for shoes, clothes, books, and DVDs, and I really do think the pro tip out there is to just focus on what you really love to sell when you go into these stores. I personally love selling shoes, so when I go into the op shops, I'm generally spending all of my time just checking the shoe section to see if I can't find a bargain. So I absolutely love doing it. I think once you've had a bit of a look around the house, you've been able to make a few dollars, the first place that you should get out to is your local thrift store, and I'm guaranteeing you, you will find a heap of money in there. The next sourcing method is a fairly common one and that is the garage sales. Now, I believe you're either a thrifter or a garage sale person and I typically side on the thrifter front simply because you've got to get up early. The pro tip that I've got for you with the garage sales is you've got to be there first thing. The early bird gets the worm. If you go a little later in the day, all of the good bargains have definitely gone out the window. So you've got to be doing that. The other one as well is a bit of a pro tip. You've got to bundle up your items. If there's four or five different items that you've found in this sale that you want to purchase, don't do them individually on negotiation. Just simply put them to the side, collect up your bundle, and then negotiate a best price with your seller. And you'll generally get a much better price doing it that way. Some things that I like to look for when I'm in the garage sales is I'm looking for the uh, electronics. So your VHS players, your cassette tape players, believe it or not, they still go on to sell, and your sound systems. They have all profited me some huge money in the garage sales, which is actually making me think I should probably go to a few more. The next sourcing method is online arbitrage. And for those of you who don't know what online arbitrage is, you're basically going onto the internet, you're finding yourself an item that you can buy online, and then you're selling that same item back online for a profit. So selling it on eBay for a profit. So I think a real pro tip with this one that maybe some of you don't know about is there are some really good Facebook marketplace groups out there that will give you an alert to any sort of online sale that might be taking place. So if you're a member of these groups, you can see these promotions taking place, jump on that person's website or that store's website, buy the item at the right time. And if you know your numbers, which is the big plus or the big key with online arbitrage, understanding the pricing differences and the gap in the potential margins that you can make, online arbitrage could be a really good place to source from. But it's definitely much more of an advanced level type of a reselling sourcing method for sure. If you're just starting out, I'd maybe focus on more thrift stores and garage sales and looking around your own home. But if you are a little more advanced, you wanna give something else a go, I definitely think online arbitrage could be a great way to go about it. Now, much like online arbitrage, you've got your other end of the stick, which is retail arbitrage. And that's going into your retail stores like a Nike factory outlet and buying an item and then reselling it back onto eBay and making a profit from it. Much like online, it is a little bit more of an advanced process. You do really need to know your numbers to make sure that you're getting the great item, but the sell-through rate is probably the most important thing. It's something that I've touched on in a recent video, but you need to make sure that the item that you're buying in store is not only gonna make you money, but it is also actually gonna go on to sell really well because you're investing quite a bit of money into these sort of opportunities. It's not so much a $2 item that you're picking up in a thrift store when you're in a retail store. You might be outlaying $50, $100 at a time depending on what the item is. Some numbers that I like to work with is to try and get the item at a 70% off a recommended retail price and then to try and sell it online for a 30% off recommended retail price and take the 40% margin, roughly speaking. That's sort of the way that I like to do it. I've done quite a bit of retail arbitrage I've got a few videos on it. Definitely go and check those out. The next sourcing method is wholesale agreements. Now, I've tried to do this in the past. It didn't work very well for me. I don't want to knock wholesale though because I know a lot of resellers out there literally build their businesses around wholesale agreements. I personally tried to do a hooded jumper wholesale purchase where I bought 250 off a supplier for about $10 each and then I couldn't really go on to sell too many of them on eBay, but that was only one try. I've also done Facebook Marketplace wholesale purchases. Basically, wholesale is just referring to buying bulk inventory. So if you're looking for a whole heap of inventory, you're generally looking for a wholesale agreement. And I've bought some DVDs, 500 DVDs off Facebook Marketplace. And while that wasn't with a wholesale supplier, it was still a wholesale style purchase. So there are definitely a few variations to it. But fortunately, unfortunately for me, the uh, process through an actual supplier didn't go too well. The pro tip that I've got for you though, if you are looking for a wholesale supplier, and I know a lot of you out there are, the best way that I would go about it is to jump onto Instagram and do a quick search for wholesale suppliers and get chatting to them in the DM to work out a correct price point for what you might be after. That's personally the way I did my wholesale agreement, albeit it didn't do, uh, go very well, but that's not to say that it won't for you. And the last tip, the one that I said it would be the secret 
to never losing out on inventory opportunities again, and that is consignment. Consignment generally done at the moment with myself through friends and family is how I'm doing it. For those of you who don't know, consignment is basically sourcing an item from somebody out there in the community that no longer wants their item and they're happy for you to go on to sell it. The pro tip that I've got for you with consignment is always to work out a 50-50 sort of a profit return. So whatever the item goes on to sell for, you split it 50-50 with both the uh, person that gave you the item and yourself. Itself. So it's a great way to literally not have to put out any expense on any particular item and give yourself a whole heap of inventory to go and purchase. So I've done that quite a number of times. A really interesting scenario for me was actually just recently at the post office when I was doing my mail delivery. And the lady said to me, what do you do? And I explained what I did as a reseller and she said that she had a number of items lying around the house. The next thing you know, her items have gone on to sell for $1,000 on eBay. I've made 500 bucks and she's made $500. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that you can literally ask anyone you ever come in contact with, let them know what you do, let them know that you want to sell. And if they've got anything for you, you can go down the 50-50% path and it will generally work out well. So that would be my pro tip. The last one that I have for you, consignment, a great way to sell items on eBay. So there's 10 really easy sourcing methods for you to go out and find great items to sell on eBay. Hopefully you got some value out of it. I've got videos on all the individual ways that I source these items uh, in the description below. So go and check those out. If you're particularly interested in any sourcing method, there's a stack of information for you guys to check out right here on this YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the subscribe button not to miss another video. Give the video a like and I'll whack up a really interesting garage sale video for you guys to check out here. Appreciate you tuning into this one, guys. We'll see you soon.